Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Pop Dissected podcast. Today, I wanted to dive into if charts are ruining music. To be more specific, do charts truly affect our enjoyment of music? I know a lot on this channel I talk about charts and I talk about sales. Never do I intend to make those stats about whether you should like an artist or if they're worthy of being listened to. It's always for context to display if an artist has shifted in their career, which I think is a better way to put it as opposed to succeeding or failing in their career. I do truly believe success is self-defined, and at the end of the day, it's about being proud of the work you've done and how far you've come. With that, let's talk about charts. I feel like now more than ever, we see a lot of artists campaigning to get a song to number one, whether it's on iTunes or on the Hot 100. Now, I don't have an issue with artists thanking their fans and listeners for getting them a number one. And I don't really have an issue with fan bases starting Twitter trends and launching whole movements to support their faves. I think that it's most exemplified on Twitter, specifically Stan Twitter, and sometimes my own comment section. How the nature of a number one song or album can make people really nasty. Back in the day, songs got their number one status through actual sales and radio airplay. A lot of songs that were big were because, well, they actually were big. They had an impact one way or another, and now anything can get to number one with streams and not needing the sales to back it up. However, that's just how the industry is now, and I'm not saying one is better over the other, but I thought that would be something interesting to point out. So with that, I feel like now, a number one song doesn't really hold much weight at all. I mean, you fight hard for a number one just so it can be another trophy on your shelf, and then what? What else does it even offer? So when it comes to this campaign to have a hit song, it seems like the efforts at the end of the day don't even matter. Number one songs and albums are becoming bargaining chips. A way to have, of course, pride in your fave's work, but also just to say they have it or to rub it in the face of another fan base. I don't want to necessarily say that number one songs and albums aren't organic anymore because I don't believe that's entirely the truth. But how many number one singles have hit their peak and then tumbled down the Hot 100? The same could even be said about albums, honestly. I see jokes on Twitter where people say, who is even listening to this? And while I won't discredit other people's taste in music, it is a good point. I just think that with streaming and purchasing parties, some of these number ones don't even matter because they gain their position inorganically. Or do they matter because of their placement? I'm not entirely sure. This sort of goes back to my video I just made on Dua Lipa, where she talks about the value of an album and how she wants to create full bodies of work. I think there's an appreciation to be had for an album. The whole point of it existing is to be a full body of work that is meant to be enjoyed as such. And from that full body of work are singles that are put out to represent that album and the different facets it entails. While I appreciate an album, I think, like most of us do, I usually have a handful of songs I listen to, but I love listening to albums all the way through on the first listen, just to get the full picture. And specifically speaking on singles, I do have to wonder if artists and fans alike genuinely care about albums. I don't think it's necessary to call it a specific artist, and I can't really think of one off the top of my head, but is promoting a single so heavily about the music or is it about the position and the validity and acclaim it can offer? I think about the format of just releasing singles over a certain period of time, as opposed to an album. Of course, that is an approach in itself, and there's likely multiple reasons an artist would do that. But in a time period where everything moves so fast and can be accessed so easily, I get why a single would be marketed and pushed so much. There's so much music out there, and we all have a variety of choices that we didn't have a decade ago, which has really changed how we consume music. So I guess it makes sense to score big with a song, a bite-sized snack from your album that people can know you from. If you have a big single, people would be more in tune with your album, right? But I also think that a big single also may be an effort to have some sort of staying power if no one does engage with your album. Now, I'm throwing stuff at the wall and letting all my ideas out. Who knows what the truth behind anything is, honestly. But when it comes to this gratification for charts, aside from potentially being able to break records, 
it doesn't really hold that much weight at the end of the day. I think when fans or artists push so hard for that number one on the Hot 100 or Billboard 200, the sight of the music is completely lost. I can't count how many times I've seen on Stan Twitter fans complaining about how they aren't streaming or buying a song or album enough after its initial release. And I think this proves that in a way, the push to be a chart topper doesn't offer that much because sometimes fans just don't put in the effort after they get their gold star. Now, some artists are able to sustain themselves on charts and with streams just because they have an incredibly huge fan base and a large pool of listeners. But for artists who don't, they're getting a participation trophy when they top a chart because when that song or album comes tumbling down, I think it proves the honest engagement just was never there to begin with. When we focus so heavily on these charts, we are of course supporting our fave, but are we actually supporting the music? I'm not entirely sure about that one. It becomes a battle. Who will be number one this week? Who isn't? Who will beat another artist out? Who will win? Who is better? It's fun and games for me. I do like to speculate about the charts, but there's no reason to take it seriously because at the end of the day, none of it really matters that much. Why do we bully people and artists about charts? I feel like back in the day, wars against artists were spearheaded by the media, but now it's really the fans, to be completely honest. The same people who say don't pit women against each other are the same ones who drag another woman to hell and back because she didn't get a top 10 hit. What is the point in all of that? I think it's important that we have perspective. It's fun to joke and guess about the charts, but there is no reason it has to go to such extremes as doxing, death threats, and bullying, all of which I've seen play out on Twitter. These artists want us to enjoy their music and celebrate their messages they convey. They literally don't want us doing all of this nonsense. We need to practice what our faves preach. Even in her recent documentary, Demi Lovato called out her own fans for their behavior, which honestly, I think more artists need to start doing. But with that, I'd love to know what you all think about charts and their relevancy and if they matter and why they're just so important to some people. Thank you so much for listening, everybody.